Avenue. Nice. Oh, very nice. If your idea of living is one long round of bridge parties, strip Mars Young in the conservatory, and a wife swapping orgy every Saturday night. Now I ask you, Alice, what sort of life is that for a woman? Well, to be quite honest, don't answer that. And I've told you before, there will be no backsliding in my car. Now, go and collect the envelopes. Yes, Aunt Emmy. Captain. Captain. Good afternoon, sister. I'm from the Salvation Army. Oh, I. We left a little envelope. Oh. Last week. For you to put your contribution in to help the poor, the sick, the needy. I'm poor. What? I'm sick too. Sick of what? Of being, being poor, poor, yes. Living in a house like this? Oh, I don't. What? I live here. I'm the part-time domestic auxiliary. The what? The cleaner. Damn. And the owners? Out. Out. Thought they would be. Sorry to have told you. No trouble. I can't find your envelope anywhere. I can't find a damn thing where my wife's not here. When will she be back? Oh, not for ages yet. You wouldn't like to help me look for it, would you? I'm sure it's somewhere, simply bulging with money. No, no, I'm sorry. Oh, come on. I've always been very keen on the Salvation Army. Oh. All this good work you do, your missions, your hostels, your uniforms. Our uniforms? I love to see a woman in uniform, especially an attractive woman like you. Those black stockings, they really turn me off. I'll do that later, when your wife's in. Oh, no, please, don't go. Not before I've given you something. Put it in the post. That's physically possible. hiding like this just so you don't have to give a little bit of something for Jesus <laughs> all right have it your own way but remember your sins will find you out by the heck the more they've got the harder they hang on to it maybe that's why they've got it <laughs> what have you had up to now about one pound twenty, two drop deads, and a very improper suggestion. Never. From the man at number 36. Well, that's terrible. What did you say to him? I told him I'd be back later. Oh. You won't. When his wife's in. Oh. Where do we go now? Back to the Citadel. Oh. It's nearly time for band practice. Oh, so it is. Oh, dear. What do you mean, oh, dear? Well, what do you think I mean? Dear, what's the matter with you lot this evening? You're not on top of the pops, you know. You're supposed to be musicians. <laughs> then that can read music and play in tune. And think that a guitar is something you get after a very bad cold. It's not their fault, Aunt Em. Captain, it's the instruments. Knackered the lot of them. <laughs> We need a new set of instruments, but until we can afford them, we will just have to make do with those we've got. Right now, next time, don't busk it, read it, right? That'll do for tonight. Oh, but before you go, thank you, O oh Lord, for being with us while we massacred hymns ancient and modern. And please help us to resist the temptations of Adam and his ants and become better musicians in the service of the Lord. Amen. Right, off you go. God bless. Yeah.
We must get off too to the Jacksons. Oh, I forgot about them. Would you lock up, Dorothy, because we've got a visit to make? I don't know why you bother. What? With them Jacksons, they'll never join your lot in the chapel. Well, why have they asked us to call? They ask everyone to call. Catholic, Protestant, Mormon, Mooney. Just to see what they can get out of you. You want to see inside their house. It's like an Oxfam shop. Oh, aye. You've got to hand it to them. Take anyone in, they could. Well, I can assure you, Dorothy, they didn't take me in. Not for one moment. Oh, dear, no. Here's the stuff for the Jacksons. <laughs> Judas. <laughs> Oh. I've washed the coffee cups and run them up over the floor. Do you still want me to lock up? That won't be necessary, thank you, Sister Smith. I'll be off then. Oh, give my regards to the Jacksons, won't you? Good night. Sarky old faggot. <laughs> Aunt Emmy. Well, it isn't Christian to mock another human being. Especially as I always knew the Jacksons were up to something. You did? Well, deep down I did. Very deep, if you ask me. Well, call it instinct and gift, if you like. But I can spot a wrong in a couple of miles away. Just like that. <laughs> now, now, take those two outside, for instance. Where? There. Now, there's a couple of rogues, if ever I saw one. How can you tell? Well, like I've told you, it's a gift. Now, you mark my words. When we start to walk past them, it'll be, good evening, Captain. Well, could you help us? And then it'll be, oh, could you tell us the time of the last bus? And when I tell them that it went half an hour ago, it'll be, oh, dear, what will we do? I don't suppose you could lend us the cost of a taxi. I don't believe it. Oh, dear, Alice. So sweet, so trusting, so daft. You <laughs> Good evening, uh, uh, Captain. I wonder if you could help us. Yes, sister. Could you tell us the time of the last bus? Certainly. It went half an hour ago. Oh, dear. Yeah. What, what do we, we do? do? <laughs> I beg your pardon. You and your fancy fella would do anything to raise the price of a bottle of meths, wouldn't you? I'm sorry, I don't... Oh, cry. come on, love. Admit it. It's never too late to repent, to seek salvation. I only wanted to ask you... For the loan of a taxi fare. The way to the nearest police station. You see, the way to the nearest police station. Yes, then that's what Catherine told us to do, didn't she, Arthur? Aye. Whenever you're in trouble, all us go to police. That's what Catherine always said. Catherine. Our big sister. So this is... I'm Arthur. My little brother, and I'm Annie, Annie Walton. We're lost. Lost? Well, we don't know this district very well. And you need some money to get home. Oh, no, that's no problem. We've got enough to keep us going. Here. Would you like some? Would we like some? Catherine Hollis gave to Salvation Army, didn't she, Annie? She said they were very kind, very caring people. Here. Go on, then. Take it. Yes, please do. But, now, look. I think I've made a Go miss. on, take it. They'll only spend it on mats. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Reveling in it. I can't take your money, sister. I'm sure you need it just as much as we do. Now, I'll tell you what. Why don't we all go back inside? Because it's far too cold to talk out here. Yes, it is rather chilly, isn't it? Chilly, aye. Yeah, well, come along, then. No, 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 no. Sister Meredith will carry that. Won't you, Alice, dear? Oh, that's very kind of you. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> Look, Green, what have you got in there? The family silver? <laughs> Funny you should say that. <laughs> After you. You, uh, you certainly know how to spot them, Auntie. Like you said, it's a gift. Oh, belt up. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. <laughs> Where were you making for? Devon. Devon? Like Catherine told us to go. Before she snuffed it. Oh, dear. Gone to glory, has she? No, to the cemetery. <laughs> no, I meant, when was she called? Pardon? When did she snuff it? <laughs> Three weeks ago. 
Go to your Uncle Percy, she said. He'll look after you. Yeah, and where in Devon, exactly? Oh, she didn't say. You mean you don't know your uncle's address? Well, n not exactly, no. We thought we'd ask when we get there. Yeah, well, Devon's a very big place, Mr Walton. Well, we know that, but the, the, there can't be many Percy Waltons in Devon, can there? Uh, especially a Percy Walton who lives in a big house by the river with a lot of trees round it. Aye, and some hollyhocks. Hollyhocks? <coughs> hollyhocks? Mm. In the garden. Yeah, oh, well, that does narrow the field down a bit, I agree. <laughs> now, look, I've got an idea. Why don't you let us find him for you? You? Well, we're very good at finding people. So you go, go back home and stay there. And then we'll let you know the moment we've contacted him. Oh, we can't. Can't what? Go back home. Why not? Well, because... Why not? Well, be, 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 because the landlord told us to go right after Catherine died. Aye, that's right. You mean it chucked you out? Oh, we didn't mind. We were going anyway to Uncle Percy's. Well, thank you for the tea. We must be getting along now. <laughs> getting along where? Well, I've told you, to the police station. But look, and I'll tell you what. Why don't you come home with us? With you? Answer me. Oh, that's very kind of you. Uh, Arthur is getting rather tired, aren't you, Arthur? Ah, very. Now settle, then. Excuse me. Captain Ridley? Yeah? Can I have a word with you? Right now. Well, oh, can't it wait? No. All right. Uh, would you mind going and sitting in there for a moment? This is official business. Of course, Captain. We quite understand. C -c Come along, Arthur. Now, what's up? Nice, aren't they? Very. You know, you were right the first time. There's something very odd about those two. Nonsense. They're as normal as I am. Not a word. Not one word. That's not what you said ten minutes ago. Well, so I made a mistake. But one can't be right all the time, can one? But even half the time. That'll do, Alice. Look, I'm sure that they are just two nice, decent people who desperately need our help. And the way that poor Arthur wanted to give us some of what little money they had left. I was quite touched, Alice. Happen you still are. <laughs> what have you got there, Arthur? It's a collection box. It says, to help the poor and needy. Anything in it? <laughs> not very much. Do you think we should? Why not? How much? The lot. Right. After all, there's plenty more where this came from, isn't there? When did you find it? This morning when I came in. But who put it there and when? Who cares? All I know is we're rich. We? You, me, her. We can start a senior citizens club now, get a few fellas in. Really? <laughs> you ever think of anything else? Well, what else is there to think about? I may look like an ancient monument, but there's no wrong with my foundations. <laughs> Sister Smith, this money was given for the poor and needy, not to open a nightclub for jiving geriatrics. <laughs> but you promised. Yes, I know I did. But we have so many other calls on our services. I mean, there's the homes and the hostels. I suppose so. But what about people like us, widowed before our time and fed up to the back teeth with it? Here, here. What can you do for us? Oh, well, all right. I suppose you deserve something. Here you are. What's this for? A package of bromide. <laughs> bromide? Yeah, to cure your bodily urges. I don't want to cure them, not with bromide anyway. Oh. Give it to someone who really needs it here. Thank you. <laughs> She's not the only one with bodily urges. Now, don't you, sir. Oh, right. Let's go and get it. Yeah. Get what? The musical gear. Aunt Emmy's called another rehearsal for tonight. I don't know why she bothers. That band will never be any good until we get a new set of instruments. But like she said, we can't afford it at the moment. Oh, good morning. Hello. Good morning. You sleep well? Yes, thank you. Where's Captain Ridley? I'll tell her you're here. Did you hear that, Arthur, about the instruments? Ah, it's not right. Every Salvation Army Hall should have a proper band. Oh, yes, they should, shouldn't they? <laughs> What 
did he say? Who? Well, the fellow who delivered them. Well, he just said someone came in the shop, paid cash and said to send them round here. But what did it look like? Well, Short, fat, peak cap and an overall with Martin's music shop across it. But no, not the man who delivered them. I mean, our benefactor. Oh, said he didn't see him. He was out back at the time. Well, I, I don't know what to say. How about thanks? Well, of course I'll thank him, if I know who he is. An eccentric millionaire. How do you know that? Well, it's got to be, hasn't it? 300 quid one day, set of band instruments the next for a crummy little core like this. <laughs> well, I mean, how, how eccentric can you get? Sister Smith. I think he sounds rather nice. Do you think he's spoken for? Oh, don't start that again. <laughs> Any news of Uncle Percy? Well, not yet, no. But we're working on it. Right. We'll be off then. Off? Off where? To the shops. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, which? Uh, both. Uh, we have to uh, pick up a few things. Well, off you go then. But don't get lost again. Oh, we won't. Oh, poor souls. Oh, I do hope we can find their Uncle Percy before their money runs out. <laughs> dear. You're still fluffing it on letter C. Right. Look, take five and the coffee's in the kitchen. They're doing very well considering, aren't they? Well, we said they would when they got a decent set of instruments. Yeah. I'd still like to know who actually paid for them. Captain Ridley? Yes? All right, bring them in. <laughs> Mr. Walton, Annie, <laughs> what is all this about? Oh, I see. You got lost again, and you went to the nearest police station. Right? Wrong. They've been nicked. <laughs> well, thank you very much for bringing them back, Sergeant. I really am most grateful. <laughs> nicked? Caught in the act of robbing a house in Argyle Avenue. Robbing it? Oh, but you must have made a mistake, Sergeant. I mean, I know these people. They'd never take anything, never. Do oh, I? All right, you. Open up. And you, tip it all out. Yes, but I'm telling you, they're as honest as the day is long. Good grief. Short day, won't it? <laughs> Miss Walton, why did you do it? Because we wanted to. We wanted to. And you did need new instruments. We heard Sister Dorothy say so. You mean it was you who... Yes. Of course it was. And the money in the box? Yes, that was ours. To help the poor and needy. Oh, for heaven's sake. I mean, who the heck do you think you are? Robin Hood and Maid Marian. <laughs> you know, I suppose you know we'll have to return all that money. Not to mention the instruments. Well, I don't see why. Me neither. Well, let's put it this way. <coughs> did you or did you not break into that house in Argyle Avenue and take all those things? Yes. yes. And you still say that's not stealing? Yes. <laughs> See what I mean? I was hoping you might be able to get a bit of sense out of them. All right, that's it. Come on, Bonnie. And you, Clyde. <laughs> the name's Annie. Miss Walton to you. And I'm Mr. Walton. Arthur to you. Well, I must say, I'm very disappointed in you both. I mean, pretending you were lost. And then all that nonsense about your elder sister, Catherine, and your Uncle Percy in Devon. <laughs> Salvation now, eh? Good night, Captain. Thanks for trying. Yeah, good night. Yeah. You what? Well, are you sure? No, hold on, please. Sergeant! Could you bring them back in here? Yeah, go on. Go on. Yeah. Where? And I, are you sure? Well, what's the address? Well, thank you, Brigadier. Thank you very much indeed. Now what? Well, seems like they have an Uncle Percy. <laughs> Found him. Just outside Caverstock, in a big house near a river, just like you said. With Ollyox. With Ollyox. And he's prepared to take you in. Oh, Catherine said he would. Can we go now? The only place you're going is the pokey. What for? For thieving, God damn it. Oh, sorry, Captain. From themselves? Come again? 
Well, it seems they own that house in Argyle Avenue and everything in it. I don't believe it. Well, that's what their Uncle Percy says. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, you never asked. Not once. <laughs> All right, then, tell me this. Why on earth did you go and burgle your own house? We didn't want anyone to see us, of course. Least of all her. Her? The social worker. The one who came round after Catherine died. She wanted to separate us. Never. She did? She, she said that Arthur would have to go into an home on account of him being a bit simple. But he's not simple. He's just a little slow. She had hairs growing out of her nose. <laughs> and big flat feet. I know the type. Just like him. <laughs> now look here. Now go on, sister. Well, anyway, that's why we took what we could and ran away. We wouldn't have gone back if you hadn't needed the money. C Catherine kept it in a trunk in the attic. <clears throat> didn't hold with banks, didn't Catherine? There's plenty left. Would you like some more? Oh, Mr. Walton, Annie. Well, we don't need it. Not now we're going to live with Uncle Percy. Ah, oh, well, I think Uncle Percy might have something to say about that. <laughs> well, can they go now? The sooner the better. <laughs> Bye! Give our love to Uncle Percy! Ah, oh, bless him. You know, I'm really going to miss those two. I'm certainly going to miss their money. Did either of you mention to anybody that we needed a piano? Well, I did say to Annie that it would be nice to play piano again. Why do you ask? <laughs> Annie and Arthur Walton, the last of the big spenders. <laughs>